Hey guys, Tim Janik here, uh, one of the instructors for Neurosomatic Educators here in Houston, Texas. And uh, somebody had a question about how do you calculate these four questions, okay? Leg length inequality, fixations, SBMs, and demands of writing reflex. So what I'd figure is I would just go over that with the chart that I have made up here, okay? Uh, which you might see this on a client one day, these uh, type of things that you see going on. So the very first thing that we look at is leg length inequality. When we look at that, we're looking at supine measurements and the standing measurements, okay? Remember, we're looking at the bottom three measurements here. Remember, when you're standing, make sure your floor is level, because if it's not level, it's going to throw off your measurements further up. So make sure that your floor is level, okay, so we can assume that bottom line right there is going to be level and everything else we've checked, the tibial tuberosity, greater trochanter, we check those three measurements. So greater trochanter, tibial tuberosity, and the heel pads, all right? What we're looking for is we're looking for parallel lines all the way down. So we can see greater trochanter, tibial tuberosity are parallel. However, the heel pads are not parallel to the rest of them. So that would indicate a leg length inequality there on that left, on that right tibia right there. Okay, so indicating that the right tibia is shorter. So if you look over here, the standing measurements will confirm what we see. If they don't confirm, um, definitely want to get an x-ray. Okay. Either way, if we see a leg length inequality, getting an x-ray will get a more accurate reading of what we're seeing at the greater trochanters. So uh, what we can see here is exactly the same pattern where the parallel here, parallel here at the uh, tibial tuberosity and then the heel pads uh, level to the ground. So that indicates again that what we see here is the tibia, that right tibia is shorter than the left one. Okay, which indicates that the right leg here is shorter than the left leg. All right, so in this case, yes, this person does have a leg length inequality. All right, next one is fixations. Fixations are any measurement that stays the same from standing to supine. Actually, any distortion that stays the same from standing to supine. So that does not count anything that's level. All right, so if we count up all the measurements, we have superior to inferior ASIS. Uh, which is superior on the left, superior on the left here. Okay, so that would be one fixation. All right, then we go to obliquity. Obliquity, we've got an outflare on the right, which is a right obliquity, and it goes to level. All right, so that is not a fixation. Any measurement that stays, any distortion that stays the same from standing to supine, remember that. Okay, so this one is level, therefore it's not a distortion. All right, so then we got A to P measurement here, right anterior and we have left anterior. That is a distortion that changes from standing to supine, okay? So that is not a fixation, all right? Well, as we come up, we go further up here. We got third rib, which is anterior right side, okay? And we've got third rib anterior right side. So that is a fixation that's number two on the fixation list, all right? Next, we go up to anterior humeral head, which is anterior on the right side there and it switches to anterior on the left side. So that is a distortion that changes. That is not a fixation, okay? Then we have the uh, SC joint, okay? Clavicular heads is what we're looking at. The clavicular heads, we have superior on the right, and we have superior on the right. So that is a fixation because it stays the same. So that's number three on the fixation list. Now we've got the AC joint here, okay? We've got superior on the right, and same thing, superior on the right in the supine position. So that would be fixation number four on our fixation list. Okay, next one coming up is the occiput right there. So looking at the occiput, it is going in the same direction. Okay, so we got left superior, left superior. That would be number five on our list of fixations. Now, and then we got temporal bones right there. So temporal bone is superior left. Here it's superior left. That is number six, so they stay the same. Notice that, okay? Then we have anterior measurement, anterior to posterior. That's anterior on the left for the temporal bone. Here it's anterior on the left. That one stays the same, so that's number seven on our fixation list, okay? And then the obliquity in the cranium. We have a left outflare or right inflare. 
Same thing, a right in flare. Okay, now it looks like those measurements are slightly off. I actually meant for them to be slightly the same, okay, instead of slightly off. So we're going to count those as being the same measurement, the same degree of uh, obliquity that we're seeing in the cranium uh, standing and supine. So don't let that confuse you, okay, guys? Uh, so that is going to be number eight on our fixation list. So we got a left obliquity there, okay? So we have a total of eight fixations, right? Hopefully you can see how we counted those up. So now we go to SBMs. SBMs are any measure, any distortion that changes from standing to supine or any, uh, dis any measurement here that was level that went into distortion or that goes further into distortion is an SBM, all right? So if we start off again at the pelvis, all right, starting from the ASIS and working our way up, we can see that that one is definitely not a SPM because it stays the same, all right? If we go to the A to P measurement here, we can see that anterior on the right side of the pelvis of the ASIS, and we look at the left side, it's anterior on the left side of the ASIS, all right? So that changes. So that is an SPM. So we're gonna mark that in blue so we don't get confused. So that's one SPM right there. Okay, next we go up. We can see that all these are fixations. We all counted those. The one that changes is this one right here, the humeral head. It switches from the right side to the left side. Okay, so that would be another fixation. That'd be fixation number two. And judging by everything that we've already checked, I'm sorry, not fixation, SPM. Sorry about that, guys. Didn't mean to confuse you, okay? Uh, judging by everything else that we saw going on up here, everything else appears a fixation. So we don't even need to count those, okay? So what we can see is we've got two fixations here, all right? Now, why did I not count the SBM here, or the uh, obliquity here? It's because we had an obliquity out flare on the right side, but then it goes to level. Remember, any measurement that goes to a level measurement, okay, it goes out of distortion and into level is not a fixation or an SBM. It's neither, all right? So keep that in mind. If you see a person lay down and everything's level, that's a good thing. We want them to be level when they're laying down, okay? Next thing we've got is demands, all right? So we're going on to the demands, and what we can see here is these are the list of demands that we're looking at. Remember, this is an all or nothing thing, okay? All or nothing. So they have to follow every single one of these or they're not meeting the demands of the writing reflex, all right, so if you haven't, if you forget where we get that from, that's from the Lovett reactor, okay? Hopefully you can read that. Uh, that is in your book. Uh, so, you know, check that, check that diagram out, memorize it to heart, okay? Remember that the bones of the cranium go opposite of the bones of the hip, all right? So that's what we're looking at when we're doing the demands that are writing reflex, okay? So if we start off, here are the demands. We got number one, which is superior to inferior, ASIS versus the temporal bones. We want to see those going in opposite directions. So if we look here, we've got this measurement here, okay, which is the ASIS superior to inferior, and we're comparing that to the temporal bone, ASIS. All right, and what we can see is they're going in the same direction. That is not what the Levitt reactor says. <clears throat> All right, we want them to go in opposite directions. So that person is not following the demands of the writing reflex for that measurement, okay? Comparing those two measurements. Next one, superior, inferior, PSIS, and the occiput. So we're looking at here, the PSIS, and we're comparing it to here, the occiput, okay? Are they going in the same direction? Yes, they are. They are going in the same direction. So they're not going opposite, which is what the Levitt reactor says. So since they're not going opposite, we're going to put no because they're going in the same direction. Next thing, number three, anterior to posterior, ASIS versus the temporal bones. Okay, so we've got obliquity here, out flare on the right side, and an out flare on the, right si on the, uh, on the left side in the cranium. Okay, so notice they're going in opposite directions, which that's what we want. We want the temporal bones to go opposite of the, uh, the ileums here, okay? So well, essentially what we want is we want everything balanced, right? Okay, but if they're not following that, we want them to follow that, all right? So uh, yes, they are following the Levitt reactor, okay? They're going opposite of each other, all right? Number four is oblique, uh, whoop. 
skipped one. Sorry about that. Which was A to P, which uh, we didn't talk about that one. So backtracking, so we got obliquity. Sorry about that. A to P measurement here, anterior, posterior. Okay, we got anterior on the left side of the temporal bone and anterior on the right side of the ilium. Okay, and those are going in opposite directions, so that's good. So that is a yes. Okay, they are following the demands of the writing reflex for that measurement. All right, so for flexion disorder, uh, we're looking at the flexion of the pelvis versus the flexion of the temporal bones. Now, uh, what we would see, uh, we'll cover this in another video where we talk more about cranial measurements. So if you haven't had the cranial course Neuro 1, you want to take that. Okay, learn how to measure the cranium, learn how to measure uh, seeing a flexion disorder in the temporal bones, and then comparing that to what you're seeing here in the pelvis. If you saw, you know, 15 degrees on one side and 8 degrees on the other side, that would be a flexion disorder. All right, and if you forgot how to, you know, how to check that out, we can I can do a video on that later. Uh, on looking at that. So what we're going to do is since this person is 8 and 8 and we don't really know all the cranial measurements, we're just going to go ahead and assume that yes, they are following the demands of the writing reflex for that measurement. All right, so remember this is all or nothing. All right, so they have to have a yes for each one of those measurements, each one of those pairs to meet the demands of the writing reflex. So in this case, this person has two no's and three yeses. This person is not following the demands of the writing reflex because they don't follow all of them. So they have to follow all of them. Even if they're not following one of them, they're still not meeting the demands of the writing reflex. Okay? So I hope this is helpful, guys. Um, you know, please leave your comments or suggestions at the bottom. Uh, make them nice, though. And uh, <clears throat> I will talk to you guys later. I'll post some more videos on, you know, analyzing the postural chart. Uh, the posturology chart and uh, if you have any other questions or comments uh, please leave them at the bottom all right y'all have a great day down here from texas all right bye